Hi again everyone, this is Dr. O, and in this video we're going to talk through the vasculature and the innervation of the nasal cavity. So let's start with the arteries. In this image, what we see is anteriorly here, there's the nose and the nares or the nostril. This would be the hard palate. Okay, and then these are representing those nasal concha. Now imagine that we made a cut and then we flipped up like this. So there is the anterior point of the nose here. And then we see the septum has been reflected up. Okay. So let's walk through some of the major sources of the arteries to the nasal cavity. We're going to start with the sphenopalatine artery. We'll remember this as one of the terminal branches of the maxillary artery after the pterygopalatine fossa. As it passes through into the nasal cavity, it gives off a lot of branches. So this is an important um, artery in terms of the vasculature in the nasal cavity. Another branch from the maxillary artery is the greater palatine artery also from the area of the pterygopalatine fossa. This will course on the hard palate. Now for the most part, it is not that large of a supply uh, for the nasal cavity, but it does communicate with the septal branches through this canal here called the incisive canal. So another branch from the external carotid artery that gives some supply to the nasal cavity comes from the facial artery and specifically the superior labial artery, will give off nasal branches that enter and supply around the nares. The last major source we see is coming from the internal carotid artery, a branch of it, the ophthalmic artery, and specifically in the orbit, we see these branches were given off and headed from the orbit medially toward the nasal cavity, and they are the anterior, and posterior ethmoidal arteries. So in general, we see sort of an internal carotid artery supply, more of this anterior and superior portion, and then external carotid artery supply for the posterior and inferior portion. Now this is the same visual from another view. Here, again, this is a lateral wall with the nasal concha here. This is the sphenopalatine foramen. And then imagine that now we've taken and we've opened it up this way. So here is the anterior nose and there as well. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about the specific branch names coming from these major sources. Starting with the sphenopalatine on the lateral side. Again, we note that it is more so the posterior area of the nasal cavity that is supplied by the sphenopalatine artery. So these are called posterior lateral nasal branches found on the lateral wall in the posterior region. More anteriorly, we see the lateral nasal branch off of the superior labial artery, which is a branch of facial artery, supplying here. Then, more superior and anterior, we see these anterior lateral nasal branches from anterior ethmoidal artery and then posterior ethmoidal artery, giving off some smaller branches in this area. So in general, the named branches of the lateral wall or the wall with the concha are lateral nasal branches. And then depending on where they're located, we see that sphenopalatine is more posterior and anterior ethmoidal is more anterior. On the septum, we see the branch of sphenopalatine called the posterior septal branches. So similar here, we saw a posterior lateral nasal. Lateral nasal on the septum, we call septal. So here are the posterior septal branches. And anastomosing or communicating with those posterior septal branches is the greater palatine artery. So we see where it comes through the greater palatine foramen, 
onto the hard palate and will communicate with the sphenopalatine artery, the posterior septal branches, through the incisive canal. The branch of superior labial and the facial artery is called the nasal septal branch. And then we see anterior septal branches from the anterior ethmoidal artery. So again, everything on lateral wall is typically a lateral nasal branch, and anything on the septal wall is a septal branch. So epistaxis is a nosebleed. And when we're thinking about nosebleeds, almost 90% of them happen in a specific area on the nasal septum. And this is called the Kesselbach's plexus. And what this is is where the different sources and their smaller branches will communicate along that area. So we see that the branches from anterior ethmoidal and posterior ethmoidal, as well as sphenopalatine, superior labial or facial, and then also the communication here with the greater palatine artery. So typically, if a nosebleed like this happens, some pressure on the anterior septum is able to stop that bleed. In contrast, a posterior nasal bleed is found more so on the lateral wall, so along within the concha, and this is typically a direct branch of the sphenopalatine artery. And so this is a large, branch that's more difficult to put pressure on. So this can lead to significant hemorrhage. And typically an emergency medicine physician would need to insert and inflate a balloon in the area to put pressure on that lateral wall. Imagine the lateral wall coming toward us. So this is a more serious um, nosebleed, but less frequent in its occurrence. Let's move on to the nerves of the nasal cavity. There are two major sources of the nerves of the nasal cavity. One of them is through V1 and the other is through V2. I want to also note that this area, the superior area of both the septum and the lateral wall, are the olfactory areas. So this contains the olfactory epithelium, which contains olfactory nerves that then project through the cripiform plate up to the olfactory bulb. Now in terms of B2 branches, we'll note that this right here, this round circle, is the pterygopalatine ganglion. So branches coming off of it that are sensory are this nasopalatine nerve, which is an important nerve that we find on the nasal septum. And then we also see posterior, superior, medial, and lateral branches. Inferiorly from that pterygopalatine ganglion, we see the greater palatine nerve coursing down, and it gives off a branch before it enters the hard palate. And then it also gives off a branch in the hard palate which then communicates with the septum through the incisive canal. Branches from the anterior superior alveolar nerves also enter into the nasal cavity. And finally, branches from infraorbital nerve enter into the nasal cavity. So there are many different sources of V2 into the nasal cavity, providing sensory innervation. The V1 branch we'll talk about here is the anterior ethmoidal nerve. So you remember this is a branch from nasociliary. Keep in mind this is ciliary, not palatine, right? So the nasociliary nerve within the orbit gives off anterior and posterior ethmoidal nerves, and the anteriors enter in and supply the anterior superior portions of the lateral wall and the septum of the nasal cavity. Whereas again, more posterior, inferior, we see is through V2. So again, let's take it from a different view and now talk about the individual branch names. So here again is our olfactory area. 
From the pterygopalatine ganglion area, we see these branches coming off. On the lateral wall, we see posterior superior lateral nasal branches. And then the posterior inferior lateral nasal branch directly off of the greater palatine nerve. There are nasal branches coming from anterior superior alveolar nerve and then internal nasal branches from infraorbital nerve. The branches for anterior ethmoidal nerve are the lateral nasal branch of the internal nasal branch. So many of the nerves are internal nasal branches, especially those that are coming from outside of the nasal cavity in. And then we also see directionality telling us the posterior inferior, posterior superior. In terms of the septum, we see also off that pterygopalatine ganglion area, the posterior superior medial nasal branch, then the nasopalatine nerve, and then we remember the greater palatine will conti continue down after it gives off this posterior inferior lateral nasal branch and supply the hard palate, then communicating with nasopalatine nerve through the incisive canal. The infraorbital branches are called internal nasal, whether it be on the septum or the lateral wall. And these are the medial nasal branches of the internal nasal branch of the anterior ethmoidal nerve. So again, keep those internal branches coming from the orbit or coming from the face. And then directionality when it is helpful here. I think one of the biggest takeaways in terms of the innervation of the nasal cavity is to think of uh, a line kind of running obliquely across here, separating the innervation of V1 from V2. And that'll be true both on the septum and on the lateral wall. So here we see V1 and here we see V2. Now let's look at which arteries and nerves run together on the parts of the nasal cavity. So here in this purple, we see the olfactory area highlighted. When we're looking at this inferior posterior aspect, remember sphenopalatine is the major artery inferior and posteriorly, both on the lateral wall and on the septum. On the lateral wall, we see that it runs with branches directly from the pterygopalatine ganglion, the posterior superior lateral nasal branches, as well as with posterior inferior lateral nasal branch from the greater palatine nerve. On the septum, we see that with the sphenopalatine artery, the septal branch of it, we follow with the nasopalatine nerve. So these two tend to run together. They are one of the larger structures and in dissection it can be tough to find many of these structures. And if we do see any, they're usually these two together on the septum. Now more anteriorly, we see branches coming from the face, both the superior labial artery from facial and infraorbital nerve on both the lateral wall and on the septal wall. The posterior ethmoidal arteries we see here, kind of posterior to that olfactory area, and in the olfactory area in part. And the posterior ethmoidal nerves will actually supply some of the sinuses in the area, but it doesn't directly supply the nasal cavity. Anteriorly, we see the similarly named anterior ethmoidal artery, and nerve running together in this region. So if we draw our line, you can kind of think of it here like that. So these branches are from V1 
and internal carotid artery. And these branches are from D2 and external carotid artery. And that's true for this region as well. Let's take a look at all of this in a 3D kind of space here. Before we get started, I just want to show you on this person's left side will be the nerves and on the right side are the arteries and the color scheme matches up with those from the figures. So we'll start looking at the nerves and we'll see an orange here is V1 and many of these V1 branches shown here do not supply the nasal cavity, but which ones do? So remember the anterior ethmoidal nerve branches will supply the nasal cavity. And we can see those kind of coming more medially here. This in yellow is V2 branches. So there are lots of them. This area is about where the pterygopalatine ganglion would be. And we can see how some of these will come out onto the face and then back in, like the infraorbital nerve. And then some of them directly relate to the different walls of the nasal cavity right away. Also shown above, we can see these olfactory nerves leading to the olfactory bulb and then passing toward the brain. Now in terms of the arteries, we see three to four major arteries. Here we see the internal carotid artery with its branches to the orbit. And then as we look from an anterior view, we can see how branches from there can pass from the orbit and into the nasal cavity, just like what we saw with the nerves. Now this artery here is external carotid artery. Coming out and across here is the maxillary artery, giving off lots of branches, including the sphenopalatine and its branches. We also see the facial artery coming up and around with its superior labial branch, giving off some arteries into the nasal cavity anteriorly. Now I want you to answer the question, which nerve innervates the anterior superior portion of the nasal cavity? You can start with which general nerve and then think about the branch name. When you're ready, let's talk about it. We can imagine our line running here. Here is our anterior superior region and here is our posterior inferior region. So we're looking for these branches right here, right? And we're looking for specifically the nerve here. So first off, which nerve in general is going to provide innervation to the anterior superior region? We can start in the most general terms with cranial nerve V1. Great, and then we can see some of its branches. So what branch do we see here as well as here? So those will be the anterior ethmoidal nerves, okay? Now, if, we're, if you're with me still, that's super great. We're going to talk more further into the branch names, but if you got to this point, I'm very, very happy. So from here, the branches of anterior ethmoidal nerves that enter the nasal cavity are called internal nasal branches, right? And then from there, we have lateral nasal and medial nasal branches. 
So if you didn't get to that level of detail, that's all right. Really, big thing I want you to walk away with right away is the answer here, which is V1. And then knowing anterior ethmoidal nerves, super awesome bonus. So thank you so much for joining me in this video and all of the videos. It's been a pleasure talking through these structures with you and trying to give you the best idea of the three-dimensionality of some of these most difficult areas um, through these videos. So thank you, thank you. I can't wait to work with you all in the future, and I will see you coming up in the next couple of sessions in the synchronous learning sessions. Um, but as always, please feel free to reach out with any questions or anything you may need. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of this course. Uh, thank you so very much.